guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal here, and I have some music in the background. Hopefully you guys can hear it, and if you guys can't, oops. But if you can, it's Never Fade Away by Samurai. It's a cover, so, yeah. And <clears throat> this is going to be What If Deku, or Femme Deku, because I, in my Discord I admitted to having a fetish, and yeah. What if Femme Deku had overhaul? So, we start with a mother having a pair of fraternal twins, and these fraternal twins, the birth was so exhausting and so taxing on her that she passed away after the birth. And sadly, that does happen to a lot of families in the world. So, we go to four years in, or two years into the future, and the husband is like, I, I'm sorry, I can't take care of you guys anymore. So he takes her, them to a orphanage and he leaves them there. And he tells them, I'm sorry, but I have, I don't have enough supplies and materials or time to take care of them. And they go, we understand. But the headmaster of the orphanage is like, the fuck? Why do we only get mutation quirks? The fuck? It's a bunch of bullshit. Two years later, we are at the Quirk Doctor, and the one of the people who actually take takes cares of the kids has found out that. Uh, I'll be right back. And the guy's name is, or the boy's name is Chisaikai, or uh, Kai Chisaikai, and the girl's name is Hana Chisaikai. Chisaki or Chiseka, whatever you want to say it as. But they're at the Quirk Doctor with one of the teachers at this orphanage. And the Quirk Doctor is all for one's Quirk Doctor. And he sees that uh, they're, they have very powerful quirks, but it's a mutation. And so he's like, they're going to be great Nomu. I just need to make them ready for the Nomu. So he gives them two quirks. He gives her a quirk that has the side effect of sadistic personality, but he makes her quirk dormant. So the sadistic personality part starts showing after a few days. And Kai gets the clean freak uh, personality from a quirk that he makes dormant, so he can't use it. So, he says that they have strong quirks, it's called overhaul, and that he, anything they touch can be dismantled and remade into their image, or whatever they want. And the leader, or one of the teachers at the orphanage goes, that's good. And he looks at them and he, she says, you can all be heroes. And we skip a few months, and they're starting to get their personalities. She started to start fights and hurt them really badly in the fight. And uh, Saika or uh, Kai Overhaul, this is gonna is gonna be his name, is staying away from people. And the orphanage is like, okay, we we need to do something. And so they send. Hana to a therapist for a year and nothing has worked so they just are like screw it let's forge some documents and the owner of the orphanage is like screw it let's forge some documents and send her to an insane asylum because we can't handle her anymore and Kai has been adopted by the after uh, Hana was sent to the insane asylum Kai was adopted by the Yakuza boss and then the orphanage get, gets attacked by all for one. Oh, my clothes are done in the dryer. Yeah, I've been doing stuff. So, the what ifs are going to come out a little bit faster, but also a little bit slower. But <laughs> let's get back to the topic. So, we skip three to four years. Kai is always has a mask on. He has a bird mask with sharp fangs like a wolf and oops he looks like this now 
Yeah, that's his facial features. He doesn't wear those clothes. And she's currently tied up into in a um, straight jacket, struggling against the straight jacket constantly. It's been there are roughly eight and a half, nine ish since they were sent away from the orphanage. And she's still struggling against the straight jacket and still struggling and struggling and struggling. And another year passes and she's still just in the box, white box with nothing around her, being fed one meal a day, a big meal a day. So she's full on nutrients and she's given sleeping agents. So she relaxes because if she's just in there now, she starts to try to use her quirk and she overstrains herself and will hurt herself. But the, but, but one day, everybody is running around freaking out because a villain attacked. And she's 10. Kai is 10. And so the villain walks into her room on accident and says, Who the hell are you? And she goes, Oh. Uh. Hi. Looks like you're lost. And she she seems out of it. Like completely out of it. And he goes, a, a little? Could you help me get to a certain person's room? And she goes, sure. What is his name? And he goes, oh, uh. Ray. Todoroki. And she goes, yeah. Just give me out of the straitjacket, would you? And he goes, sure. And he grabs the collar of the straight jacket to rip it off, but he accidentally rips off the cork canceling collar. And the straight jacket goes boom and completely disintegrates. And she disintegr she also goes into a fine mist and then reforms and she's perfectly fine. All the drugs and uh sleeping agents are out of her system now. And she's like, damn. I knew my cork was strong, but damn, that friggin' felt good. Oh, crap, it hurts. But that felt good. And she stretches and yawns, being like, so where'd you want to go? And he goes, uh, Ray Todoroki? I'm her long... I'm one of her cousins in her, in her father's side. And she goes, I don't care. I don't like you. So she grabs his face, and he is a villain, by the way. He's been doing bad things. And she's like, now you die. He goes into a fine mist. And and she she made sure each limb blew up at a time. So he could scream in pain. And she gets a sense of euphoria from this. And she's like, oh, oh I love watching evil people burn. And so she grabs the floor being like, and this place is evil, so I'm going to watch it burn. And she slowly disintegrates it. She can control how fast it uh, gets pulled apart and how how uh, fast it gets put back together. And so the entire place disintegrates and she starts walking off, losing track of time. And it's She goes down a few blocks and finally someone stops her like, who are you? And she goes, um, I am Hana Chisaikai. And he goes, what? And she goes, yeah, I'm Hana Chisaikai. The daughter of the man who left me in an orphanage because he's a dumbass and sister to a dumbass who left me also in that orphanage to get fucking tortured. And she's getting pissed off and she slams her hand into the side of the building and the entire wall of the building gets disintegrated. And he goes, okay. 
And she did have rubber gloves on, but she took them off because she was getting pissed off. So she's like, are you going to try to stop me from walking back to that orphanage and burning it down? And he goes, um, what orphanage? And she goes, she lists the street name and the name of the teachers. And he goes, oh, um, that orphanage has already been burnt down. A villain attacked it. She goes, I'm going to fucking kill him. I'm going to torture him till he dies. Oh, and she gets really mad at this. And he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? Tell me. I can help. And she goes, fuck off, you razor head. And he goes, um, rude. And second off, how do you know who I am if you've been in an asylum in an orphanage? And she goes, I followed freaking heroes. Who doesn't follow heroes? And he goes, true, true. Um. Okay, my beauty. <sighs> and he tries talking her down for like an hour or two. And he's like, screw this. So he activates his quirk and. She closes her hand is about to punch him and be like, stop deactivating my quirk. And he goes, and he uses his scarf and wraps her up and then blinks. And she tries to grab the scarf, but her hand is, one of her fingers is trapped and the rest of it's free. So she can't uh, touch it with her whole hand like she needs to. And he's like, first off, be nicer. Second off, life sucks. So if you come with me, I can help you sort this stuff out. And she goes, fuck off. And he's like, oh, crap, this isn't going to work. So he just knocks her out. And he walks to the uh, call that he got earlier. And he sees all the heroes there. And he has a little girl on his back tied up with his scarf. And they see this and go, um... What's with the mummy on your back? And he goes, it's a little girl. She kind of destroyed a building. I have to talk with her later. And one of the doctors who was on staff to help round up the rest of the patients sees her and goes, fuck, she escaped. And he immediately runs over and shoots a quirk canceling or quirk uh, suppressant dart into her so it sticks into her and it just stays there and as I was like what the fuck she's out cold and he goes you can't trust what she's doing and she just opens her eyes and goes fucking Christ they're so fucking paranoid as I goes the fuck you're asleep and she goes no I acted asleep I was just tired of walking And one of the doctors runs over and tries to put the collar on her. And as I was like, whoa, 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 stop. First off, what is that? And second off, what are you going to do? And they say, this is a quirk canceling collar. And it looks like a dog collar. And he's like, that ain't a quirk canceling collar. That's a fucking dog collar. And they go, we have a sadistic, um, uh, doctor that kind of was like she'd look cute in this so she kind of designed it so we have no control over the freaking collars she's the one who designs the collars so if you have any problem with the collars talk to her but he runs over and he straps the collar onto her and tightens it just enough so it works and it feels like a choker to her so it's not uncomfortable but it's not comfortable it's just there She's like, fucking Christ. Paranoid asses. Now I really want to kill you. I was joking about that earlier, but now I really want to fucking kill you. I want to make sure you go, you get tortured. I fucking kill you multiple times over. Then bring you back because I can because I've accidentally done it before. And she just explains everything that she wants to do to this guy. And he runs away being like, She's safe now. <laughs> they can come out of hiding. And so I was like, okay. 
So he puts her in the back of a squad car and she's like, Oi, zombie, don't you dare fucking leave me. If you leave me, they're just going to put me back in a fucking padded room. And he goes, well, what do you mean? And she goes, I'm a sadistic son of a bitch, obviously. Duh. But they put me down as clinically insane and can't be helped. Because the asshole that ran the orphanage was like, we can't deal with this sadistic personality. So fuck you. And she starts yelling at Aizawa, being like, don't you dare fucking leave me because they're just going to put me in a fucking patty room again. And she just keeps saying that over and over. And she starts to cry, being like, why the fuck have I been tortured this way? And she's mentally breaking down. And Aizawa walks up and hugs her. And she just starts bawling her eyes out. Because she's never been hugged by a man like this besides her brother. And she doesn't even know her brother is. So, <laughs> Aizawa goes, after this, I will see about the paperwork and I'll see about fixing it and making sure you have a correct evaluation, but I'm still going to need a psychiatrist to evaluate you. And she goes, okay. So, when it's all said and done. She's taken to Aizawa's house and his wife, Miss Joke, says, Hi, honey. How are you doing? And uh, Hana's like, You can put me down now. You don't have to keep me fucking wrapped up like a mummy. And she's yelling at this point still at um, Aizawa for keeping her wrapped up. And he finally took the gag out of her mouth so she would sh uh, shut up. And so she starts yelling at him again. And he goes, if you don't shut up, I'll put the gag back. And she goes, fuck you. And he goes, okay, I'm getting the gag. And so he puts her down on the ground and she's starting to roll around violently. And he goes, if you move, I'll tighten up that collar. She goes, fuck off. And she shuts up and he goes, okay, there we go. And so he unties his scarf and lets her go and says, your room is the first one on the left. And she goes, okay, fucking asshole. And she's just constantly insulting him because he's like, oh, this is going to be a nightmare. And he walks up to a joke and says, so apparently she's been tortured for the last few years of her life. And I need to uh, make an appointment to a psychiatrist for her to get evaluated. And Joke goes, okay, I'll get my best one out here. And he goes, no, 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 no. Not the best one. We need the most honest psychiatrist. And she goes, don't, no, you don't, you don't mean. No, no. And he goes, yes, yes, yes. I mean him. And so we go a few days into the future and she's like, fucking Christ. Why do I have to fucking leave? I don't want to leave the room. And he goes, why? Is it because it's not padded? And she goes, yeah. Hell, you might be taking me to a padded room right now. He goes, I'm not taking you to a padded room. I promise. And she goes, oh, really? You promise? So if you take me to a padded room, you're going to take this collar off and let me torture you? He goes, if I take you to a padded room that's meant for you, I'll let you take off the collar and uh, torture me. And she goes, okay, thank you. So they go to a, uh, a padded room, but she goes into the room next door that has a um, uh, a mirror and the guy inside starts screaming, Oh God! Oh God! Take that monster away from me! And Aizawa goes, Tell me what you see. Through the microphone, and he says, I see a monster! She's covered in blood! She's ripping people apart and putting them back together. What the fuck? And he's screaming about what he sees, and he goes, 
thank you. And he walks her out and the guy starts to calm down because he see he doesn't see the monster anymore. And she's like, what the fuck was that? And he goes, it's to see if you're insane. And it just looks like you're a sadist. Or a sadistic bitch. Whichever one you want to call yourself. She goes, I prefer the second one. He goes, okay. Good for you, I guess. And she goes, yeah. So, Azala is now walking her to the um, police station for the paperwork to adopt her. Okay. And when they get there, he runs into Naomasa and says, Hey, Naomasa, um, uh, uh, you ready for the uh, thing? And Naomasa goes, Yeah, I'm ready. And no one knows what Naomasa's quirk is, so I'm going to say Naomasa's quirk is a behavioral quirk. So he can help people change their behavior slightly. And he can figure out what their exact personality is. He can't uh, uh, change their mindset, but he can change their personality. So, he walks into the interrogation room, and Izal walks in with him and says, I'll be in the other room, so I'm not affected, but here she is, and when you're done, completely changing her, and she's like, what, do you, what the fuck do you mean change? He's like, we're here to calm down your sadistic personality, or see if it's part of your one of your part of your quirk that gave you this sadistic personality. And she goes, "Okay, fuck off first, and second off, there's nothing for you to change. I'm perfect how I am." And he goes, <laughs> and so so Nama also starts talking to her, and her true personality comes out, and she's like. Can I rip you apart? And he goes, What are your intentions on villains? And she goes, To rip them apart, put them back together, and rip them apart again. And leave them for the heroes and cops to clean up. And he goes, Okay. What are your intentions for heroes? And she goes, They're all assholes. Except for the eyes out, dude. He's not as big of an asshole. But I still want to rip them apart, but put them back together and leave them there. And he says, you don't want to hurt them after putting them back together again. She goes, no, just maybe just a little. I kind of want to make them scream and in pain. He goes, okay, okay. And he keeps a asking these questions, and her true personality keeps coming out more and more. And he finally sees the monster within. And ever since he started using his quirk, her second quirk came out. She can teleport. So he starts using his quirk and asking questions again. The exact same questions again. And she, her answers start to change slightly. Slightly. Just a tiny bit. And instead of saying, I want to hurt them, put them back together. And maybe hurt them again, but have them still in full condition. She goes, I want to make them scream. And then put them back together and make sure that they're all healthy. And he goes, okay. So she doesn't lose her sadistic personality. And he finds out that her mentality changed ever since she was four from being a loving child to a sadistic bitch, apparently. And that she is currently going through a phase of her quirk to completely unlock it. So he's like, okay, Isaiah, we're done here. And he deduced all this by what her answers are. And he walks into the uh, other side of the glass and her ears are highly sensitive to sound and her eyes are highly sensitive to motion. Her uh, nose is highly sensitive to smells. Oh, crap. And... So she sees now Masa walk into the other room with the um, with Aizawa on the other side and she just hears the entire conversation and she and he hears Namasa saying so apparently her quirk isn't completely manifested or 
all for one got to her and gave her another quirk to make her this way because her sadistic personality is from a quirk. And she's putting this together and going, so all for one's the bastard I have to kill for or making me this way. I'm going to make him scream. And she's just thinking about all these different things that she wants to do to all for one. And all of a sudden there's a big boom at the front door. And they hear, give me my sister. And everybody run and all the cops run into the main building and they see overhaul. Because they recognize his mask, his bird mask with fangs. And he says, give me my sister. Now Masa walks up to him and says, hold on, hold on. We are not accusing her of any crimes. We're just wondering what happened to her over the last three years. And he goes, I don't care. Give me my sister. And he's yelling at them now. And she walks out and goes, Shut the fuck up, brother. And he goes, Oh, hey. And she goes, You can go screw off. Because you left me in that goddamn institution for three goddamn years. You could fuck off. And they start yelling at each other. And he's like, I'm sorry, goddammit. And he starts to tear up because he didn't know where she was. And he honestly didn't know. And he keeps saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she goes, I don't care you're sorry. I don't care. You left me there. And I gave up hope on people getting me out. Until a random villain that attacked me and I had to defend myself and I killed him. And she's saying this out loud. I killed him to get out. Apparently he was after Ray Todoroki or something. And they're currently yelling at each other, and the cops like, um... And they walk over to Namasa, and they whisper, What should we do? And Hana looks at them and says, You can shut the fuck up, that's what you can do. And she just keeps yelling back and forth with Overhaul. And Overhaul finally says, Just please come back! I have somebody that I want you to meet. And she goes, Who? You're too addicted to your fucking clean freak attitude that you wouldn't even in touch someone if it's your own goddamn sister. And he flinches at this and goes, I'm sorry. And she goes, what the fuck ever? Just leave. And walks back into the interrogation room and sits down and is pissed off. And so she undoes her collar and slams her hand on the table, disintegrating the table and puts the collar back on. Because she wasn't chained down. She was uh, asked to stay there. And so she did. It's now time for the two-year time skip. Aizawa has adopted her. She's been living with Miss Joke and uh, Aizawa. And she has been... It's 8 o'clock in the morning still at my place. It feels like fucking 10. But... Uh, she feels like she's been held back and um, one day while she's walking around town and fighting criminals because she hates um, Because she hates criminals and she fucking hates her brother for leaving her there. So she's getting more pissed off because she's think every time she sees a criminal, she fucking kills him and then keeps going. And she hears someone scream and yell that to get off of her and don't do that. And she runs into the alley and she sees this man and this woman or woman. No, that's a teenager. And she runs over and. She disintegrates the man and then puts him back together as a woman. And she goes, there you go. Now you can feel what it feels to be a woman. He's like, what the fuck? 
He looks at himself and he goes, the fuck did you do to me? And she says, I cursed you to be a woman. And she looks at the girl and says, are you okay? And she does have a heroic personality where she will save other people even if it costs her life. But she'll take as much pain as possible and deal as much pain as possible to... Uh, to... Hmm. Hurt them. Yeah, hurt them. So... She looks at the woman and thinks, damn, she's hot. And the woman looks at her and goes, um, hi. And she's slightly blushing. And Hana goes, okay, so what's your name? And oh my God, hold on. Actually, you know what? I'm going to end it there. I need to look up the name of that one character because everybody or Roman Mina the shipper for or some of my ships. God damn it. He reads my goddamn mind. Knows who I'm trying to emphasize in this one. But. Oh my God. I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Talk to you guys later. Bye.